Greetings, viewers. Welcome back to the Athlon Thunderbird 1300 machine. That's got nothing to do with us. It still needs the hard drives, and it had two drives in it. It was a Samsung 40, gig 40 gigabyte and a Western Digital 80 gigabytes. I'm going to install those back. The Windows install, it had Windows XP on it, is in some kind of shambles. I know that. So I'm going to see if I can just clone it into an image so I can get data off the image later and reinstall from scratch and then of course add the unofficial service pack and all the other stuff back to it. The other drive, or at the very least it was a dual boot system for a little while. It had uh, Ubuntu. I think it got as far as 9.04 and I'm probably going to have to do something with that, too. So, we'll figure that all out as we go along. I don't know if I'm going to worry too much about the Linux stuff. I just really want to get the Windows, and at the very least get the drives installed so they're not sitting out because this project has been a long time coming. So, I'll be back when I've got enough screws to mount the drives and when I've got the actual drives themselves. Okay, so we'll start with this. This is the what I hope at least is the right drive the 80 gigabyte Western Digital which appears to be jumpered correctly for a slave device now I gotta decide where I want to put it obviously the primary drive is gonna go there so I'm gonna install it right here hopefully it will actually go into place I don't like how far forward that is now this uh, I believe this is the right drive because it's got the EBC sticker on it. The other one's got an HP part number on it, so I'm pretty sure it came out of something else. Uh, probably actually the D530 CMT that I had for a while, but this is jumpered for what looks like cable select, and I don't want it jumpered for cable select, so I'm going to fix that. And I don't know if you can really see, but it does actually specify. I don't even know if that really helped, but it does say Master Slave Cable Select, and the jumpers here on this suggest that Master is the one closest to the interface. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one in now as well. It's a thinner drive, which is kind of odd. Like I said, I don't like how far out those are sitting, but I guess the reason why they sit so far out is so you can put fans in the back here because there are spots for fans which that's tempting to do although I think they're only like 40 millimeter maybe 60 millimeter at best so probably not it'd be pretty loud fans so this is an older case an older system it's also tempting and I might just do it anyway to install a new video card because I mean I'd like to keep it original at least as original as possible, but I've already changed the case. I've upgraded the two optical drives. I've changed the power supply. I don't even remember what power supply was in here. I think it was some cool Max thing that this is long since gone because obviously it's a piece of junk. Okay, so now I got to figure out what I'm gonna do about this. These are gonna go away. I don't want those. Probably should tie them up or something. Which maybe I will do anyway, I don't know. I'm going to actually plug in the IDE cable first. So, that, that kind of bends a bit. Do this. And then, in. There we go. That was pretty easy. I gotta decide if I'm gonna put a video card in here. I think I'm gonna do without for now. I'll get it set up and afterwards, because I do have a, like a Radeon 9600 XT that I believe will go in there because that's a 1.5 volt AGP slot. You can tell, I'm not sure you can really see on the camera. I think the, the thing is blocking it. You know, well, you can kind of see it. But there's the notch is right there, as opposed to way up here, 
which I'm pretty sure stands for 1.5, where the other is 3.3. I might have it reversed, but it's one or the other. Uh, there were also slots that had no keys. Those are universal. You can plug anything in it. I only found out about that recently. I thought that it meant that it was a slower AGP slot, but, uh, I mean, because this one says AGP 8X on it. I thought that the uh, notch determined the speed, but I guess indirectly it does, because the older ones are slower, obviously. So I'm going to get this all hooked up and make sure it still works. And I'm going to see what the Windows install is set up like. But I don't think that it's good news. Okay, let's go ahead and flip the switch. And see if it still works. Oh. We'll get the monitor set up properly first. And we'll try it. Well, it's not happy about something. I have to investigate that. Okay, that was weird. Uh, I had to go in and clean the contacts on the RAM, but it looks like it's working now. I tried upgrading it to 2 gigs. It didn't particularly like that. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's, again, because the contacts were dirty. But I'm going to leave it alone because I don't think that it really needs two gigs of RAM. I think one gig is more than enough for anything that this thing's ever going to do. For whatever reason, it's still stuck in 2018, but I'm going to have to put the side panel back on because, I, of course, I had to take the side panel off in order to do this. I wouldn't be surprised if the contacts are still loose. Really wouldn't surprise me at all. This case cover does not want to go into place, does it? Here we go. But, uh, well, it works. It's good enough. It's not like it's a mission critical piece of equipment anyway, so. As long as it's still running. So it's a 1.33 gigahertz uh, CPU. I think they call it a 1300 Thunderbird chip. But I'm not 100% positive on that. It might actually be a, uh, a genuine Athlon, like an Athlon XP. Because I know I've got a 1000 somewhere around here that was an Athlon XP. Uh, it'd be a pretty slow Athlon XP, but it could still be an Athlon XP. But in any event, I guess now that we're here, I'm going to see if I can set this, because obviously it's not October 13th of... Okay, what's the thing I need to move over to? Oh, it's down to move sideways because that makes total sense. Oh, it's the 18th. 2021. It's Thursday. And of course, it is 1447. Alright. So, floppy drive. Of course, there's only the one. IDE. Everything appears to be detected. I'm not sure why the bus master is disabled. Unless there was a reason why the bus master was disabled. Allows better tolerance for memory compatibility. I think I'm going to leave that alone. I think all of that should be fine. Resources should be fine. It's got an onboard infrared port for some reason. I don't know where that actually is. Onboard MIDI. I don't know why that's... We'll leave that alone anyway. I'm not probably not going to use it. Of course, there's your hardware monitor. With the CPU that's apparently running at 40, 51 degrees. I'm not sure if I believe that get out of that. I don't think... Yeah. So we'll go ahead and we'll exit saving changes. 
which will probably make it stop working. Alright. Let's just see what it does. Oh, look at this. Let's try booting Windows XP. And just see what kind of a disaster zone is going on here. Does this even have a uh, service pack installed on it? I don't think it does. Because it says Windows XP Professional. As opposed to just Windows XP. So, really, I think that just as a matter of course, I should probably just reinstall. I got a mouse. I do not have a mouse. Is my mouse broken? The system... Oh, it does have USB ports. Oh, look at this. It wants Windows XP Professional CD-ROM. Yeah, alright, you know what? I'm not dealing with that. I am just going to hook it into my network and see if I can boot uh, Reflect off of the network. Alright, let's see if we can boot the Reflect Rescue CD. There are no network activity LEDs on this thing. I just noticed that. So... This could take a very long time, and I have no way of knowing whether or not it's doing anything. That's a bit of an annoyance. So, I guess I'll be back once it's booted. Hopefully once it's booted. And uh, we'll see where we go from here. Okay, well, predictably that didn't really work out. So, now I am copying the files manually which is going to take absolutely forever what a pain okay with that finished let's see if I know how to do this so we'll try that this disk I can't get the other one to eject, probably because the system is laying on its side. It's one of those weird LG drives, and I know that those have trouble with uh, ejecting. I guess the, uh, the belt isn't as good as it really probably should be. So this will give me Windows XP Service Pack 3, which is good, because I want Service Pack 3. Then I have to see about Linux, see how new I can get that to go. Okay, so I want to delete that. I'm going to create a partition. And I'm going to make it... See, how big should we make it? It's a 40 gig drive. I'll make it 20 gigs in size. I'm going to install to that. Quick format NTFS. And from there, I should begin the install process. Which may take a little bit. All right. Here comes phase two. This is the graphical setup. I love how it always says that it'll take 39 minutes no matter what system you're using. That's not going to take 39 minutes. You know, in a way this is actually kind of a refreshing setup utility. It's not like uh, Windows 10 and all of its Cortana and internet-enabled nonsense and the telemetry and all that stuff. You know, it's just welcome to the exciting new world of Windows XP. And at the time, it was exciting, you know, the fresh new look and all of that. Towards the end, it did kind of get a little stale, but if only we knew where the world of Windows was headed at the time, I think we'd all gladly go back to Windows XP.
I had to fill out all this information, which will include the product key, and uh, then I will be back. Oh, there's no audio, but I'm pretty sure that we can all hear the audio anyway. You know what it sounds like. Final step of Windows XP setup. Uh, I don't really care about automatic updates. I'm going to check for internet connectivity. This computer is connected through a LAN. I'm not going to register. I don't think it would matter anyway. There we go. That is it. But, drivers need to install drivers. I expect, anyway, I expect that we're going to have to install some drivers. Who knows? I guess we'll find out in a minute when it boots up. Alright. So, there's no more unknown devices. Got the SIS video. Interesting thing is that it uses a C media, I believe they call it the Zier 3D audio chipset, which I think is a, a different one for me. Usually you see analog sound decks or some Realtek chipset of some kind. The Realtek's were infinitely better than the crappy sound decks, ones that didn't work at all. But this one's got a C media one. I don't know. But uh, that is pretty well it for the basic setup. I do now need to come in here and I need to go to XP Crap. And there's a couple of things that we need to install. Of course, we need to install the unofficial service pack 4, then all the updates, and then we need to install an antivirus program, and then also on top of that, probably put a web browser on here. Maybe some other things. I might not bother with the web browser for now. But, we'll see. Okay, so apparently, uh, one of the end of support updates at some point, uh, between when USP4 version 3.1b was released and when the update roll-up came out, one of them bricks the machine, so I had to undo that, which is great. And the antivirus won't install because the CPU is so old it doesn't support SSE2. So this is where we're at. This is where I'm going to leave it. I don't have a choice. So I guess the next step is going to be to uh, just install Linux or I guess reinstall Linux. Okay, now I've already done some rejigging of the partitions and stuff so that way everything is now set up properly or set up so that I can do this. I'm going to install this which is an older version of Ubuntu. I don't think running the Unity desktop on this is a good idea. So we're going to just put 10.04 on it. And we'll leave it at that. It had 9.04 on it before. Okay, I want to specify partitions manually. So, this could be interesting. Takes it an awfully long time to scan the disks. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I'm going to add a partition here. This is a primary partition. X4 as the home partition. And then it'll scan the disks again for whatever reason. Even though it knows the change that I just made. So this 
I want to add at the end a two gigabytes. Stop it. Swamp area. And then whatever's left over. I'm not sure why it keeps blinking like that. Primary. Now it has that. There we go. Should be good to go now. I'm not sure why it keeps flashing like that. That's weird. Okay. So, I guess now... It's going to install. And hopefully it's going to work. I haven't installed the video card yet. But this is kind of taking entirely way too long. I'm still not sure why it's flashing like that. That seems kind of ridiculous and unnecessary to me. But it's Linux, so somehow I'm not surprised it's doing something ridiculous and unnecessary. Okay. Reboot. Don't mind if I do. I really don't think that it likes the SIS video chipset. That's what the problem is. Boot Lunix. If it'll work. I mean, that's the other question that needs to be answered. I know that uh, Linux does not like SIS chipsets. And it's running at a low res right now, I can tell. And it's running at a completely incorrect resolution right now. Like completely, and yeah, it's, that doesn't look very good. Okay. Now it's working a lot better. It's still not great. Let's see if the auto will be able to figure that out. Yeah, alright. I don't know if it's actually running at the correct resolution either. No. Now why is it... Something is not really right here. I'm not sure why it won't run it at native resolution, but whatever. I guess it doesn't matter, ultimately. So, Linux is running. Which is good enough for me. Running at the correct resolution. Found new hardware. Of course, good luck with that. It's halfway off the screen again. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. I mean, I don't really care because I've got everything that I need. It's just running the uh, the generic 
Oh, well, it does know what it is. Radeon 9600. Alright, we're still working. And it's installing. Which is why my monitor is flashing like that. I think it succeeded. Might not work properly until you reboot. Alright, well... Let's restart it then. Okay, well, the resolution's wrong. Click this balloon. No. Really? 1280 by 1024. Apply? Yes. Okay. If it doesn't crash, we should be good to go. And that will be pretty much it for this. So, thank you for watching. And if you've got a comment, feel free to leave it down below.